It's going to be a quick video today. Uh, well, I'm going to try and make it quick. You know what I'm like? I, could, I do run away at the mouth sometimes. Today, we're going to install .NET Core on an Ubuntu workstation along with some development tools that will allow you to actually develop .NET C Sharp code on a Linux box. Interested? Stay tuned. Well, hello, good morning, good evening, good afternoon, wherever you are, whenever you are. What's today? It is, I've got it on the screen here, it's Tuesday the 4th of September 2018. I'm going to start doing that now because these videos could quite uh, quickly go out of date. So, you know, <laughs> now is now and it's very current now. But if you're watching this a few years from now, you may want to consider whether it's still the latest video that you want to watch. Anyway, I hope the content is still relevant. So, in today's video, um, we're going to install some. Uh, we're going to install .NET Core software development kit on an Ubuntu box, along with Visual Studio Code and Git. Is there anything else? I think that's it. So let, let's begin. Okay. So, I chose Ubuntu as my flavour of Linux. Everything just seems to work really well on it, um, whereas I've had problems with, with other instances of Linux. So that's why I've chosen Ubuntu, but you can use any version of Linux and any Debian, is that the right way of pronouncing it? Debian uh, package, uh, package-based Linux distribution, this video will work for. If you're using a Red Hat uh, uh, distribution, uh, it'll probably be slightly different. I'm going to make my terminal bigger because people said, you know, that it's very difficult to see, which is a very, very fair comment. So there we go, made it nice and big for us to get going. So first thing we're gonna do is we're just going to do an update of our system. Just making sure all the packages are up to date. Now the sudo command uh, means super user do. Is that too big? I think that's maybe too big. Let's take it down a notch, eh? Zoom out, that's a bit better, isn't it? Yeah, okay, so there's nothing really to do. We're up to date, I made sure we did that anyway. Now, what I'm actually going to do first is install a git. So, well actually, let's, let's check to see if git is installed. Not, okay, so we will in, install git. Okay, uh, so yeah, sudo apt install git do you want to continue yes of course we do now git as you know is just a code repository this is a local version on this pc the reason we're installing it is it's just a good thing to have and also visual studio code which is the text editor that we're going to install kind of complains a wee bit if you don't have it it's fine you can kind of you know cancel the complaining um, but it's just it's just a good thing to have it anyway Let's just check we got it. Okay, so we've got git installed. So we're going to install .NET Core now. So I just want to take you to the Microsoft website. Well, of course, we will use Google to do that. Uh, crazy, isn't it? Really, really should stop doing that. Um, and we go to the, the download page. Now, because it knows we're running on a Linux distribution and it selects the Linux tab here by default and here we are .NET Core the latest version is 2.1 that's cool but I just want to draw your attention to if you're running Windows you would get the choice of .NET Core and .NET Framework. Now I'm going to do a video on the differences between .NET Core and the .NET Framework uh, later on um, but I just wanted to draw your attention to the fact that we're running on Linux it's selected we know we're running on Linux all we can do is download and install .NET Core. Now you get two options here. You get, um, you know, if you want to build apps, you can install the .NET Core software development kit. Or if you're just running apps, so if you're maybe deploying servers to run uh, .NET Core code, you would install the runtime. Again, maybe it gets a bit confusing. What we're gonna do is install the software development toolkit and that actually includes the runtime as part of that. Um, I think they're obviously just giving you the option to install the runtime separately because you wouldn't necessarily want to install software development kits on different deployment servers. You, you don't need it. Um, so we're just going to install, well, just, we're going to install the .NET SDK, which includes the runtime. So 
pretty decent website from Microsoft. You select the version of Linux that you are wanting to use. So we're, we're on 18.4 and it just takes you through the, the steps that you need to do here. So I hate doing this, but I mean, you can see here, this is a relatively long thing you need to type. Uh, so I'm just gonna cut and paste it in. Um, and this is basically, as it says here, before installing .NET, you'll need to register the Microsoft key um, and register the product uh, repository so that we can get the relevant dependencies. So we're just gonna paste that in here. Hit enter. Cool, it's done that not complained and then we'll just do this as well again I, I i do hate cutting and pasting it seems a bit pointless you know but i'm sure i would make a lot of mistakes if i typed that in so that's us just done the pre pre-work uh, we just registered the microsoft stuff um and then we now need to do these uh next three steps so um yeah let's just follow the microsoft instructions this looks like we're installing some kind of transport HTTPS transport, there we go. Goes away and it does that, fantastic. Um, again, I think it's just asking us to do this update. We've already done this, but let's uh, just do it anyway. Oh. Missed the S off it. Okay, we're all good. And then finally, we'll install the .NET SDK and the version here is 2.1, which is the latest version. Yep. And it will go off and do that. And now, you know, the thing with, you know, .NET Core is it's, you know, truly uh, platform agnostic. It will run on OS X, it will run on Linux, it will run on Windows. That was the original idea behind the .NET framework, but it never really came to fruition. So um, I think Microsoft have, you know, they've, they've moved on a lot in, in the last few years and, you know, they've, they've kind of taken a multi-platform uh, approach, which I think is excellent. And from what I've used of .NET Core, it actually seems really nice. Till it's cool, just cool, into the mouth. <laughs> nice. The, the main thing I would say, it, it differences itself from the framework is that it's a lot lighter and it lends itself to, to cloud native apps and containerized apps and all that kind of stuff. Very much a, a framework of the, you know, of the time. So it's just finishing off, it's saying as it says here, it's just doing a bit of configuration. This is a one-time configuration. Um, can take up to a minute, but it only does it once. Okay, so that's done. So .NET Core should be installed. Now I just want to show you what I was talking about earlier when I was talking about the runtime and the, the software development kit. If we go back here, just to show you, if we selected the runtime this time, and we'll select again Ubuntu, oh, the wrong one, 18.04. These steps, take it from me, are exactly the same. The only thing that's different is this last command here. So if we try and run that, which is basically the install command for the runtime. It, also, already, it says here we've already got the newest version of the runtime installed, which was installed as part of the software development toolkit. So I just want to show you that just to make sure that, you know, you're not missing out on anything. And you can check to see that it's um, installed by going uh, in a very similar way uh, as we did for Git. Most of the commands around .NET Core are use the .NET um, keyboard. In the same way, we just type version and we go, we've got version 2.1 installed. So that's uh, all, all good. Okay, so we could just leave it at that. We've installed .NET Core and we have installed Git, so that would be enough to get you developing. Um, if you wanted to use one of the editors that came with Linux, like uh, Vim or Emacs or Gedit. But just to round off this quick tutorial and setting up our development environment, I thought it'd be useful to have a quick look at VS Code and install VS Code and have a look at a couple of the features, very high level, um, to get us going. So let's, uh, let's do that. The installation is very simple. So let's just go uh, to our favorite search engine, which of course is, yes, Bing, absolutely right. He says with a smile on his face, just search for VS Code. Um, and we go to the, the download of VS Code. And you can see here, uh, Visual Studio Code or VS Code is it's a cross-platform 
uh, I keep saying browser, it's a cross-platform editor um, for, for Windows, Mac and of course Linux. So we are running on Ubuntu, so we'll select the deb package to install. And it should pop up, there we go. And we just want to open it with um, the software Software Center, or whatever it's called. Okay, and we simply click Install. Okay, great, that looks like it's installed. Let's just, yep, it's installed. We can remove it if we want, but we don't want to do that just yet. So we'll just go down to the application launcher and if we scroll down, I'm sure it will be there. There we are, Visual Studio Code. Let's open it. Now again, not a full tutorial on Visual Studio Code. I just want to point out a couple of key features. The first one is this uh, thing called extensions, which is other text editors have a similar concept. Basically, you can load in um, definitions for various languages so that you get you know code highlighting and all that kind of stuff, debugging and all those useful things that you want. So the one that I would recommend for C Sharp and Visual Studio Code is this one here. It's called C Sharp for Visual Studio Code. Um, and it just gives you a bit of jargon about it there and what it does. Um, over seven and a half million downloads with four stars, it's, 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 it's pretty decent. So let's install that. Uh, while that's happening, it's very quick. Uh, there are other extensions you can load for other languages and other bits and pieces like that, which you can explore at your own leisure. So that's installed now. So that just gives us that nice debugging capability, color coded text, and even the IntelliSense dropdown, which is super, super useful. Um, I would not be able to do a lot of coding if I didn't have that, I have to say. So the other nice feature of this is there's an integrated terminal window. Basically, it's just like a terminal window that you could launch outside, but it's integrated, which is quite nice. So what we're going to do now is we're actually going to use the terminal to create a new application, a template, application template. And what do I mean by that? Well, hang on a second. So before we do that, let's just get into the right place and we'll create a directory for our project. So we'll go into my documents, we'll make a directory, we'll call it something like code, we'll move into that uh, directory. And then, over there, all you need to do at the command line is type .NET. As most things with .NET Core Framework will do, they'll start with .NET. Uh, new, to create a new application. Now, before we pass anything else to it, if we just hit enter there, what that actually gives you is some help on what are called templates that are available. So we're just going to create a console application, but as you can see there, there are lots of other templates. Um, for example, ASP.NET Core, um, MVC application. It will create a template, empty template project for you. So again, you can explore that at your leisure, but for now, we're just going to create a very simple console application. We'll call it something like uh, Hello World. Enter. And that goes off, .NET Core goes off, and it creates a nice um, shell template for you. So if you do a directory listing again, there's a folder called Hello World. So we'll change into that to see what's in there. And you can see there are two files, program CS, which contains the program code we've got so far, and Hello World CS Proj, which is a project configuration file. And we've also got a directory with um, some objects in it. So we can run that. So again, .NET, can anyone guess what command we issue to run the application? Run, Forrest, run! That's right, run. And all it does is just print Hello World to the console, so nothing terribly dramatic. The only other thing I want to show you here is if you do a listing again, can you spot the difference? Yeah, we've got a bin directory now because it's basically compiled the code that we have. So, final thing I want to show you is we can just open that project in Visual Studio Code by opening a folder. Uh, it's already got documents and code selected, so we just select the folder that we want. Click OK. 
and that will load that into Visual Studio Code. Now, um, it will start, you can see here it's actually doing something. This is just um, the extension that we installed. It's just basically actually installing a couple of helper uh, packages to assist with debugging and the use of that language uh, package, which is done. And it'll pop up with, do we want to reload some assets? Yeah, we do. That should just happen once, I believe. Shouldn't keep happening. So yes, we've got, um, let's look at our project file first. It's just an XML file. Um, you'll have to do some more reading on that. The, the thing I'll just really point out here is the framework that we're targeting and uh, we're targeting the latest framework as of this point in time, which is the uh, application framework 2.1. And that may change depending on which template we selected, funnily enough, but that's for another video. I won't go into that here. Uh, and then finally, we just have our C Sharp, uh, our main program file. And I'll just show you the IntelliSense drop down. So if you want to write another line out, it will do all, all that stuff for us, which is uh, really, really nice. A lot of text there, those will not give you that facility. So I really love uh, Visual Studio Code for that facility. It's absolutely fantastic and of course we could change and edit the um, the code here which we're not going to do and we will leave that for another time okay so just a short video today um, but one I think that's going to be useful for those of you wanting to play around with uh, Linux and .NET Core and as I say uh, the next few videos I'm going to do uh, some stuff on API development, um, containers, microservices, all that kind of stuff. I may or may not use uh, Linux as my desktop, but in case I do, and to labor the point of difference between .NET Framework and .NET Core, I thought this was a useful precursor video to do. So I hope you found it useful. Um, I've put all the links to all the sites that I used in the commentary below. If you liked the video, please give it a like. If you've not done so already, please subscribe to my channel. Um, other than that, um, thanks for stopping by and I'll see you next time.